Forever you will be. Forever you will be. The Lamb upon the throne. I'll gladly bow my knee. I'll gladly bow my knee. To worship you, Lord. Forever you will be. Forever you will be. Himself. 
years forever you will be forever you will be the lamb upon the throne the lamb upon the throne I'm glad Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 TPT translation please Revelation 12 14 good job everybody please read with me for the two wings of the great angels were given to the woman so that she could fly and escape into the wilderness to her own what special place where she was nourished for a time and times and half a time away from the face of the dragon. God supplied what the woman needed to escape the dragon. To go to her own place. A place where God has reserved for her to be nourished. I want to prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. In this month, may God give you what you need to get to the next level. I say, may God give you what you need to cross over. I say, may God give you what you need to escape uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, secondly, I pray for you that the winds of the Almighty will carry you to your own place, uh, to your place in destiny, maritally, financially, in career, in every of your pursuit. May you ride on the wings of Jehovah in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I prophesy over your life that in this season you shall be divinely nourished in the name of Jesus. I say may the word of God nourish you. I decree and declare that you will be nourished in the name of Jesus. In other words, you're not permitted to experience dry season. I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus. Just as they came and the Bible said they discovered that Jesus was no longer in the grave. I pray for you. Receive wing to be where you ought to be part time in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has tied you down, whoever has concluded over you, I decree and declare that heaven will release a surprise package on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. The woman thought it was over. The dragon thought he has gotten the woman. But from nowhere, God supplied the strength. I pray for you. Receive grace to cross over. Receive grace to escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. What killed others will not kill you. What stopped others will not stop you. What devoured others will not devour you. In the name of Jesus. That's my blessings for you today. And so shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. The same TPT translation. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. While she was singing the Lord reminded me of this scripture. It says yes God raised Jesus to live. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives where? Come on say it confidently. Lives where? He will also, he will also raise your dying body to live by the same spirit that breathed life into you. I prophesy over you. If you're sick anywhere in your body, there is an unction for healing in the house this morning. Lay your hand there and I'm going to pray. I decree and declare that if that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ dwells in you, may that same power, may that same spirit raise up, quicken, heal anything dying in your body in the name of Jesus. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. When it comes to healing, we don't need to ask God if it is your will, heal me. No, the will of God is to heal you. I cause every sickness, every disease, whether it's on your knee, your back, your head, my grain, I command you, go in the name of Jesus Christ. For by his stripes you are healed. The one that made you holy, made your body whole also. For by his stripes you are healed. In this season, I decree and declare that the spirit of the living God that is at work 
quicken you, will quicken your mortal body. I command whatever is dying to receive life now. Whatever is dying, receive life now. Whatever is out of place, I will command you, return back to normal. Give me return back to normal. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Give your hand, clip, clap your hands and celebrate God. Give me a clap of faith. Shake your body. Move that leg. Believe God it is done. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. You spirit behind my grave. I curse you today. In the name of Jesus. By the unction of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare. You are illegal. You are illegal. You have no power to be there. Get out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Amen. Put your hands together and sit. take your seat, please. Take your seat. While I'm preaching, the healing grace and the healing virtue will be walking. Amen. Apostle Paul said to the man at the beautiful gate, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I give unto you. Sir, ma, I've come to the place now with my walk with God where I'm no longer doubting or wondering if I have the healing grace. It's obvious. But you must release your faith to be able to do what? To receive what God has for you. And I pray for you that your testimony will be next. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome to church. Please make your neighbor welcome. Celebrate your presence. Then let them know you're glad you're sitting next to you. Acknowledge their presence. Acknowledge their presence. Our online viewers, we're glad you're there. We're glad you're joining us this faithful Sunday morning. May the Lord bless all of you. As you watch, I pray also that the same grace at work here will touch you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you. We are ready for your word this morning. We ask the Lord you speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you, Lord, none of me. Let Christ be revealed. Let the power of God be made manifest in this place this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory and we vow to return all of it to you because you alone deserve the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Before going to the word of God, can we celebrate the workers of this church for last Sunday? For managing the crowd, may the Lord bless each and every one of you in the areas you allow God to use you. Let's celebrate the choir also this morning for that wonderful ministration. God bless you. Quickly, Luke chapter 11, verse 52, NLT. The Bible says, What sorrow awaits you, experts in religious law, for you remove the key of knowledge. Somebody say the key of knowledge. Yeah. Say for you remove the key of knowledge from the people. You don't enter into the kingdom yourself and you prevent those or you prevent others from entering. Woe unto you rulers or leaders of religious, religious, religious law. He said for you have removed the key of knowledge from the people. You do not enter and at the same time you are preventing those that want to enter into the kingdom from, you know, from entering. What did they do? They held back the key of knowledge. Somebody say knowledge is power. Knowledge. Say knowledge is power. Knowledge. Uh, but hold that thought because I'm going to say something else you know, during this teaching. We are still in the same line but not on the same topic or subject. We are still moving in the same direction. So by God's grace, my assignment within the next few weeks is to put keys into our hand. And we are going to be considering this subject, kingdom keys to building a successful Christian marriage. Kingdom keys to building a successful what? Christian marriage. We have considered the fact that God hates divorce. God does not want us to divorce as believers. And we have also looked at the fact that there are things that make marriages end in divorce even within the Christian, you know, um, Christian family. So by God's grace, our assignment now will be to put the keys that is required 
in building successful Christian homes in our hands. I said here that whatever you see as success today is built and sustained by someone or a group of people with the right knowledge. Whatever you see in life that is succeeding, that is doing well, whether it's ministry, whether it's career, whether it's business, whether it's family, anything you see today that is succeeding and is also sustained, you know, is a product of knowledge. That means there are brains behind every success you are seeing today. We look at the nation where we are privileged to be in today called America. America is succeeding because uh, there are knowledge that are, that are doing what, that are doing the work behind the scene. We see churches that are doing well is because there are people that have the right knowledge uh, and that is the reason why that ministry is striving in the same, uh, in the same vein in business and in career. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse, verse 3, TPT, Proverbs 24, verse 3 says, Wise people are builders. Do I have wise people in the house this morning? He says, This is how you know wise people. Wise people are what they are builders. Every wise person is a builder. Wise people are builders. They build families, they build businesses, they build communities, and through intelligence and insight, through what intelligence and insight, their what their enterprises are established and does what endure. I want you to look at that scripture again with me. I'm beginning to love TPT translation. It's not the full Bible, the whole Bible does not have it, but you know, I eat from there and it tastes so good and easy to digest. One more time, let's look at that scripture there. What does it say? It said, What well, wise people, not foolish people, wise people, wise men, wise women, wise couple, they do what? They build, they are builders, and they build what? Families. A wise person will build family, they will build business, they will build communities, and all and true intelligence and what? Inside. So when I say the keys to having a successful kingdom marriage, what I'm simply saying is uh, the, is the spiritual intelligence needed, you know, the sound mind needed, the, what you need to know to be able to build a Christian home. That's where we're going in this season. It's a true intelligence and insight of what happened. Their enterprises, uh, their companies, their marriage, uh, their family, their career are well what? They are well established and it also does what? Endure. Because it can be well established and not endure. That means when something is well built with knowledge, it outlasts you. Are you hearing? So your building for, for the next generation, it doesn't die with you. The kingdom can be established with you, but your kingdom may not be established with your children. But where wisdom and knowledge is well applied, the outcome is that the enterprise is established and what endures. Those two words is what established and Endures. I pray for you that whatever your hand comes upon after this season, may it be established and may it endure in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So endure simply means it will last. It will outlast you. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, TPT again. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. It says, every wise woman, and, and you can just remove the W-O there and circle it for men. Yeah, 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 because we need wise men also. Not just wise women to build the hope. He said, every wise woman, woman does what? Encourages and builds up her what? Her family. Every wise man, every wise woman encourages and does what? And builds up the what? Their family. So, any good family you see is not by chance. It didn't just happen. It took knowledge and what? Understanding well applied to produce what? The wisdom that you see at work. So he went further to say, but who? But a foolish woman or a foolish man over time would tear it down by herself or by himself. This is what I tell everyone that wants to get married. I said, if it works, it's you. If it doesn't work, it is you. It is not the pastor. It is not the church. It is not who joined you. It is not who connected you. It is your own responsibility. Let's look at that scripture again. This is this our foundation and it's important that every woman or every man encourages and builds up 
builds what up her family. But a foolish woman, over time, look at that, over time, so that over time may be two years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, but over time will do what? Will tear it down by her own self, through her own what? Actions, through your, her own action, through the man's action. So everything that you see that used to work all of a sudden is stop working is because someone has refused to do something. Are you hearing me? So by action, things are built. By action, things are torn down. He said, build up and do what? Tear down. I pray for you. Concerning you, it shall be building up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let me say this, you heard the, the, the scripture we read there in that Proverbs chapter 23, 24 verse 3. It talks about them building, you know, communities, building family, building business. So what I'm giving you, the points I'm going to be dropping, you can also apply it in any of these areas. So if you're not married, you can take, extract it and apply it in your business, apply it in your career, apply it in every other. You could be building community as what? As a politician. As a court politician, you could be building the community, but these keys, you need them to be able to do what? To build well-established and enduring enterprise. So let's note the following real quick. Number one thing to note is that success is a reward for investment of responsibilities. That what success is a reward for investment of what? Responsibilities. Success is what? A reward for what? For investment of responsibility. Somebody say reward. Somebody say responsibility. So when you see success, it's simply saying someone has invested something. Someone has taken responsibility. Someone has given up something. Someone has done something for you to be able to see the success that you are seeing. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, we know the scripture, King James Version. The Bible talks to the Lord speaking to Joshua there. Brought Joshua into the place of taking personal responsibility for the outcome of his endeavor. God was sending Joshua to go and do something big, something mighty. Joshua was just uh, uh, the, the protege of what's his name, Moses. Uh, he has never led the people like that, but God called him into something big. And God said, I'm calling you, I'm anointing you, I'm going to back you up. But you will take responsibility. You will invest and then you will take responsibility. When you invest and you take responsibility, the outcome will be good success. And we'll see that in this scripture. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from who? From your mouth. But you shall meditate in it when day and night that you may do what? Observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will have what? Your way prosperous and then you will do what? You will have good success. Somebody say personal responsibility. So we cannot sit down and blame the community or blame the system or blame America or blame our culture that that is the reason why our marriage is not succeeding as the children of God. No. No, you cannot blame traditions. You cannot blame cultures. You cannot blame a, a, a church. You cannot blame the system. You cannot blame America and say, well, marriage don't work in America. That's why this is happening. No, it has nothing to do with America because we're looking at this subject as kingdom citizens. And I pray for you again that what swallows others will not swallow you. I say what swallows others will not swallow you. See, many of us, many women, they make all the investments they want to make to be able to get a man, but refuse to make the investment to keep a man. Yes, there is an investment, there is a responsibility you must take, you know, if you want to get a man. There is also what you must do to keep a man. The same for men. There is what you must do to be able to win a woman. And there are things you must continue to do till death do you part to keep that woman. Did you get it? 
I'm trying to balance it because I don't want the women to live here and feel like pastor came on us today or the men go and say, pastor is always on the women's side. I am not on anybody's side. I am on the Lord's side. Yeah. Note number two. <clears throat> Note that knowledge is not powerful until it's applied. Knowledge is not powerful until it's what? Apply. So don't assume you can build a successful marriage, a successful enterprise because you have read and watched someone. <laughs> don't make that mistake <clears throat> of thinking because you have this, you have attended this class, this seminar, you've gathered all these ideas. Believe you me, it requires you applying that knowledge. Until knowledge is applied, it is not seen as wisdom. So the wise are those that apply the knowledge. Are you hearing me? Every one of us here, we're gathering knowledge. Since this teaching began, we're gathering knowledge. But the only ones that will see results that will be established and endure are those that are doing what? That are applying what they are getting. What I'm giving you now is knowledge. What you do is, is what makes it work. Wisdom. So I pray for you that you will operate as a wise man and as a wise woman. Yeah. It's like sitting in a car with driver's license. And say, so, okay, now finally I got driver's license. You come in the morning, you sit in the car and say, let the car go. No, the car will not go. You will have to take, yes, you can show the driver's license. Oh, you can even tell the car, I don't have, my driver's license is not even African owned. This is American state of Virginia, a no issued license. And then you sit down there, the brand of car notwithstanding, unless this one they are making self-drive, I won't buy it. I've told somebody that, they said, I said, don't buy me that kind of car. I won't, I won't trust anybody like that. I will trust myself to God, call me home. No, I'm not doing all that stuff with them. Sorry, I'm not trying to spoil business for them. I'm saying me. Mm -mm. I don't even trust my daughter driving me. Talk less of. <laughs> my wife knows I don't trust anybody driving me because I don't read when you're driving me. That's how you know. Yeah, and I'll be, if you're not careful, I'll be telling you, slow down here. You know you're supposed to make a turn here. You're doing 60, you're turning there. Why are you on this lane? Are we not exiting there? Oh, yes, I do it. I'm guilty too. So most time my wife will say, I'm not driving you. You either call over or you drive. So now imagine me. Somebody I don't know, somebody I can't control. Get in the car and they just, no. Number three thing to note. We are still on notes. Your notes will be filled. I pray that you will apply them. Note number three. To change our season, we must change how we reason. To change our season, we must change how we reason. The reason I dump this year is because many marriages here in the West, they are going through because we are bringing the way we used to do marriage from wherever we are coming from into America and it can't work like that here. Those that succeed, that are able to record successful marriage even here, they have changed the way they think about marriage because why the season has changed. Woo. I wish you can get what I'm telling you now. The season has changed. The season has changed. Back in the days, you read the Bible, Abraham called her husband, Lord, Lord, you shall call. Sarah called Abraham, Lord, Lord. Sarah didn't have a job. Sarah was a, was a sit down, was a sitting home, but she has, she has an assignment. She had a ministry. Her ministry was to raise the son of what promise, which was Isaac. So, of course, she would call Abraham, Lord, Lord. If you're waiting for your wife to call you Lord now, I, I, I feel for you. Yeah, in this country. Not even for the wife. I feel for you because the wife is going to work. You are going to work. You are signing up. She's signing up. No, but I'm going to get somewhere that will excite each and every one of you. But we must understand that for us to be able again to change our season, we must first change our reason. As a man ticket in his heart, so is he. Those that succeed, it begins from their thought process. Are you hearing me? 
I'm not too much into cleaning the house, doing all that stuff. My wife has a special gift, special anointing. We can't catch up with that. And sometimes she frustrates us because even when we try, it looks like we didn't do it. Because can you imagine you clean somewhere, somebody still come back and in your absence, you know they cleaned it again. That means you didn't do a good job. But guess what? You cannot take advantage of her because she's doing that. At least if you can clean, can you say thank you, honey? I appreciate what you're doing, honey. I celebrate what you're doing. Thank you. You know, some of us think uh, this entitlement mentality, we need to lose it. We need to lose it. Whether you're a man or a woman, you can't enter into marriage with this entitlement mentality. Believe you me, I'm telling you what I'm living. I'm an African man, raised and brought up in Africa. <laughs> Although my wife still don't believe. I, you know, there are people that were, if I, if I was a Lagos boy, complete, six years, seven years I did in Lagos, I did six years in Lagos and I behaved like I lived there all my life because of where I came up from. I'm from the place called Delta State. And your child not. He said, look to be precise. He shared my quarters. <laughs> yes. I don't just know who God says I am. I know who I am. So hear this. <laughs> if I end here, and if every married person gets what I'm about to say, that marriage will change. Hear this. Man wants honor and respect. Man, you see, they've said, oh, find a stomach, you find a heart. Forget that his stomach. <laughs> find his belly, you find his heart. Forget his belly. Some of them don't want anything extra in the belly. The belly is already too big. man wants what? Honor and respect. Now, let me change it. Every husband, every husband needs, see the words I'm using, man wants honor and respect. Husbands needs honor and respect. You know that a want and a need, they are not the same thing. A need is an essential. It's a necessity. So if you're with a man, now, if it's not your husband, you can go to work and disrespect any man. That's on you. You can come to church and even disrespect this pastor because I'm not paying your bill. That's okay. You can disrespect the cab driver, a man, you may get away with it. But sir, uncle, auntie, don't disrespect your husband. What every man fits on, like oxygen, is honor and respect. You give him that, you have him for life. This is a major key. You give him respect and honor, you will own him for life. He may be poor at home. He may not have much, but give him respect and honor. Even when he's making mistakes, don't lose those two things in correcting him. Put on the, the, the Bible says, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of something. What you need to put on is the helmet of honor and the breastplate of respect. Sir, you can disrespect your pastor. It's okay. He said, God call him. He will take your nonsense. My wife has two people. There are two sides of me. She decides who she sees. She's here. There's a sweet side of me. What do people see all the time is the lion because I'm at work. I can't come here and do mini mini with your soul. This is soul business. So some of you say, Pastor is tough. I'm not that tough. Catch me at home. Yeah, catch me at home. You wouldn't know it's the same me. But they can catch me when I'm happy at home. Yes. <laughs> not, not when they have pissed me off. So my wife decides who she sees or who she hangs with. By these two words. If she disrespects me, I don't hold back. Can I throw something in there? 
You know some women, you have money. And because you have money, you think you can just go ahead and solve any problem. You need something, you buy it. Kids need something, you take care of it. The man is watching. He may have all the money, he won't do it. He will allow you to spend your money. Because allowing him to authorize or to spend his own money is what he enjoys. My wife is still suffering one of that sin. Yeah, the consequence of one of that sin. She went and took care of something. Pay attention. Don't allow anybody to distract you. Went and took care of something without telling me. And I said, Ronnie, you did that? He said, yeah. I said, okay. That's good. Go ahead and start handling it. I'm your pastor. I'm telling you the truth. She's still handling it. Even if you think he will not bring it. Ask him. Ask him. He feels so honored. He has empty pockets, but his head is so big. I don't know. When you reach, when you get to heaven, ask God. Yeah. Ask God what, what he did to man. I don't know what he did to us. Anointing does not remove it. Every man needs what? Every husband needs what? Even when they are wrong, hold on to what I told you today. The breastplate of what? The breastplate of what? And the element of what? But don't forget the main one. Oh, just put that on the side. Then I say, okay, so what does women want? Somebody say, forget them. No. <laughs> you won't have dinner today. And unfortunately, church does not have snacks. <laughs> now, every wife needs love and security. Young man, every wife needs what? Love and security. You see, I'm not quoting scripture for you. So, no, no, I'm, I'm done talking to Auntie. Uncle Misa, every woman wants love and security. If that's why we say, oh, women, oh, my wife is insecure. That's what she needs security. That's why when, when, when a man goes, and, 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 and does something outside, what happens is it threatens her security. She knew you used to be a cheat. She knew you were a sweet boy. She knew you were a gigolo. But the moment she married you, now she's fighting and she's forcing to have you all to herself. Most of the fight I had with my wife is this subject of what? Security. That's why they are the first ones to talk about uh, the children's whatever. What are we going to do when we retire? That's why. You see, because left for me, I'm fine here. I've renovated my house here. I'm not impressing anybody. AC is working. Heater is working. I have a car. The kitchen is on point. I don't need anything in Africa. But my wife sat me and said, I'm not worried about now. Now you jump plane. You're gallivanting. You're running. You say your children are American children. You don't know who they're going to drag in here. And if they drag in an American boy here, they don't care. They're going to live their life. They'll say, okay, they have money. They will put you somewhere. He said, you know what you need to do? I'm thinking, I told you she always go into the future and bring problem and bring issue. He said, I have traveled into your 65, 70 years old. Me and you. Where are we going to stay? Hotel? <laughs> You're going to need a house help. You're going to need a driver. You need to start going home now so you get used to home. Because you will not, even if you decide to be buried here, there's a season of your life that you will not live here. So yes, there's a season that you will be in Africa. And that is the time you will be pouring back home. 
embraced the people to do this work. She traveled. Security. Every woman wants to be secure. They want, that's why they say, my husband. That's why I remember when we went home the last time, not because my wife is insecure and all that stuff, because we've heard people say that you're, you are the crown for your, 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 your husband is the crown on the woman. Some people fought it because somebody slapped the wife and killed the wife. They said it's not a crown. Yeah, there are some that are not crown. But if you have a crown, know that it's a crown. And the woman also is a crown on a man. I'm telling you, I have seen it. Okay, I've left where I'm at. But just remember that for the woman, what do you give to the woman? Love and security. When you understand this, you won't fight who is the head and who is the tail and who is this, who is that. See, let me tell you, when there's no head, that means what? Dead. Anything that does not have head is what? Is dead. Anything that has two heads is what? A monster. Number 14 to note, my time is up. I've not even given you a key. You're just noting. Number 14 to note. But have you been blessed so far? That marriage, that success in marriage is not achieved by chance, but by choice. Because marriage is love-based, so you choose to marry, you choose to stay married, you choose who you marry, and you choose what you allow in your marriage. You can't blame anyone for your outcome. Marriage succeeds by choice. The two individuals says, this one will work. This is why people that are not saved, their marriages are working. They are not speaking in tongue. Some of you think, submitting prayer point, I, I remember the story of... Um, a woman that came to see a pastor and he was complaining. He said, oh, eh, my, my marriage, my, my husband is this, my husband is that. And the pastor told her, he said, listen to me. Listen carefully. He said, yes. He said, I want you to do something for me. Within the next few weeks, go serve your husband. Even if he's mad, just serve him full. Respect him. Do all this stuff for the last time. And if he doesn't change, come back and then we can talk about the divorce. The pastor waited week one, week two, week three, one month, three months later. The sister, I found the sister in the church and I said, ah, sister, I've been waiting for you for the divorce. He said, ah, pastor, divorce you. No, me and my husband, we are back. We are not divorcing anything. Now, this man has been coming to every night in jail, praying, dropping prayer point. Man of God, believe with me. Everything, every problem does not need prayer. Africa, who do us? Every problem is not solved with prayer points. Some are solved with common sense, not prayer points. When it comes to marriage, hear me, 98%, no, 98 is too high because there are some people that came from areas where they have remote control. <laughs> yeah, some of you that are, your, your spouse has messed somebody up, they are fighting you. So let's say, let's give you 75% of the problem in marriage is your problem. Are you pretty, 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 but your character don't take. <laughs> I think that was Patra. <laughs> Patra was ministering to so many of you, but you didn't know. Number one key. Pay attention to this. Number one key. Build with God. <laughs> build with what? With God. Many are building for God, but they are not building with God. It is possible to build without God. In Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, we know the story. What happened? They were trying to build this thing to get to heaven. They said, we're going to build this and we're going to make sure it touches heaven. The Bible said they were building for themselves. They were building to, to, to make themselves feel good. God was not part of it. And what happened? God struck them with different languages and scattered the project. When God is not involved in it, you are fighting God. You must build 
with God. Many believers are building life for themselves and by themselves. You must embrace what I'm telling you today. You are building a home. Build it with God. Build it with God, not just for God. Let God be part of what you're building. Let God be part of you building that home. Let your children know that God is part of this family we're building. Let your spouse know that God is the builder. Look at the Bible in Psalm 127 verse 1. It's a common scripture. That except the Lord builds a city, they that build, they are building, but they are building in vain. Wasted labor. That shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, I say, wasted labor will not be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Except the Lord builds a city, they that build, they build in vain. We must understand according to that Malachi chapter 2 verse 15, that God put marriage together to raise godly children for himself. So the union is a unit God has established as a platform to raise what? Godly children. Why are you building without God? You must build with who? With God. I said here that building requires you understand his pattern and build according to his pattern. What am I saying? There's a way God wants the Christian home to run. There's a way God wants the Christian marriage to function. It's not where you come to fake it till you make it. No. It is a school where the children are not only learning based on what you are saying, but they are learning based on what you are doing. I'm telling you, if you are a married man and you're on the street, pyong, 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 and your children are watching you do pyong, 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 pyong is not in the Bible. Before you go and start Googling, pyong, pyong, pyong. I, I just found out that I'm older than Google. I'm older than Google. So some of the things you ask Google, ask me. <laughs> so if you're doing pyong, 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 as a man, be careful because guess what? Apple does not fall, fall, fall from the tree. Your children are watching you. Especially those of you that still come to church and you're faking it. You're lifting your hand. You're praying louder than pastor. Doing all the acro spiritual acrobatic. Your children are watching you. You will be so shocked. That the moment they get to that stage. They will start doing what? Pium, pium, pium. <laughs> I don't have translation for it. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> be careful because... That is how we build in this kingdom. They are watching. We lead by example. We instruct by example. We correct by example. We inspire by example. That is the kingdom way of leadership. So hear this. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4. It says, for every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Lift your hands wherever you are and say, Lord, I apply for your help. Lord, build with me. Please say, he said, Lord, build with me. Build these children with me. Build this marriage with me. Build this business with me. Build with me, oh God. The Bible says, for every house is built by someone. But God is what? The builder of everything. I pray concerning you, Alima Toseke, that God will not be missing in your home. God will not be missing in your marriage. God will not be missing in your children's life. All that believe that shout a big amen. One major sign that you are not building with God is disregard for his words. Disregard for his instruction. Disregard for his ordinance. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 27. 20, 24 verse 27. TPT. Awesome job back there. He said go ahead. Do what? Build your career. And do what? And give yourself what? To your work. 
But if you put me first, what will I do? You will see your family, what? <laughs> you can build your career outside of me. That's on you. You, you die broke, it's on you. Build your work. Put yourself to your work. Build all that stuff. But if you put me first, I will not only make you wealthy. I will not only establish you in career. I will give you extra, what we call jara. And that will be what? The fact that, that sorry, um, the, 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 the confirmation of what validates that I'm building with you and that you have given me in the first place is my involvement in your family. He said, you will see your family, what? Built up. Built up. I pray for you. May your children be built up. Amen. Oh, please say amen. amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. Maybe I will end here. Why is it important to build with God? He said, I'm not talking about building for God. I'm talking about building with God in partnership with him. Why is it important? Number one, A, sorry, A, is foundation. Foundation. If you want a solid foundation, a fortified foundation, God must be involved. For the Bible says that, that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Psalm 11, 3, but hear this. If the foundation be destroyed what can the what the righteous do but if God is in the foundation the foundation cannot be destroyed it's impossible for any foundation that God is the builder or God is involved to do what to collapse pay attention please because I know there are many marriages that are going through there are many marriages that have been through and there are many marriages many marriages that will still go through They've been through, they're going through, getting ready to go through. What will determine if you break through is God's involvement in the foundation. Ah, I asked my wife, 18 years anniversary, when did we go to this expensive place? And I went, I took care of you. <laughs> we were walking and I said, babe, I said, I want to ask you one question. I thought maybe she thought I wanted to change the ring, do all those other stuff. But no, I said, no. I have a question. Why did you stay with me? Because two years, if some of you experience what we went through the first two years of our marriage, we won't be together. Even your pastor will sign off for you. Say, son, go in peace. My daughter, go in peace. Return with another testimony. <laughs> My wife said, I don't know. Sometimes I ask myself, what kept me with you that first two, three years? But this I know, that God was in need from the beginning. And we have God in need from the beginning. Sir, ma, build with God and make sure that your foundation is solid. God is the only one that has the capacity to correct faulty foundation. Not man. So, this is supposed to be my church time. It's running very fast. It got to a point where I began to say that my marriage was a mistake. Hear this and hear me well. What you call a mistake, you can no longer invest in. It's like you going on the wrong direction. The moment you know you're going on the wrong direction, something happens to your energy. Never, no matter what you're going through, don't conclude that this was a mistake. The ways of God are too deep. My being married 20 years is a mystery for me. I'm telling you, church, it's a mystery. Because our ways are not God's ways. So when I cancel individual, I say, if I tell you my own story, you will leave this guy. Get God in it. If it's not of God, it will stand. If it's of God, it will stand. And when it stands, hear this. No matter the storm, 
no matter the rain, no matter the wind, somehow you just find out that the marriage is still there and then it's getting better. Am I talking to someone here? When you build with God, it guarantees solid what? Foundation. Foundation. This is the most important reason why we must build with it. B, I said, you have the assurance of victory after the storm. And then C, you have strength to go through the storm. When you build with God, you enjoy the privilege of fortified foundation. I pray for our children that this will guide them. That this will guide them. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. Jesus is talking about the foundation. Look at the 27. He said they were, they were, he said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise, what? Wise man or a wise builder. A wise man who builds his house where? On a rock. Jesus is that rock. God is that rock. Go further. Say, and the rain descended. The floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall. For it was founded where? On the rock. NLT, is that what it is? Give me that scripture in NLT. Just 25 in NLT. If you can give me that fast, I will appreciate it. Excellent job back there. NLT, verse 25. Okay, now I'm praising you too much. Okay, there we go. He said, though the rain comes in what? In torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, that marriage. He said what? Sir, uncle, it won't collapse. Why? Because it is built where? The bed. If your marriage is not standing on this rock, rededicate it to God. Rededicate it to God. So when you come and you are doing wedding and then you're doing traditional, you're doing um, all the stuff people do, you're knocking door, you're knocking your door, you're knocking somebody, they're kicking you, whatever tradition you do, at the end of even with the church, carry that marriage. Dedicate it to God. And live like indeed you have dedicated it to God. For someone here, affliction will not rise the second time. Receive wisdom to do it well again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. A threefold cord is not easily broken. That is you, your spouse, and God. If God is in it, it will survive any storm. Believe what I'm telling you. When I was getting ready for my wedding, somebody came and told me and my wife. He said, I had a dream. I said, what is it? He said, in that dream, two of you were in the house, and the house was shaking. The house was shaking. Everywhere was shaking. And I said, excuse me, did the house collapse? <laughs> no, I needed to know. And the person said, no, the house didn't collapse. I said, thank God. We're still getting married. Honey, I'm still going to marry you. Yeah. Let me tell you, that dream was not a lie. That dream, the storm came. The building has shook. The building is still shaking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it ain't going to collapse. You know why? Sometimes I say, God, because when God called me, he called me from Ezekiel 37. And he said, the bones are very dry. So some managers walking here, look at the manager and say, oh, I'm going to get married. I said, ah, me and Flora, that happened to us. I don't open Bible to cancel some people. I will be telling story. My wife will tell you story. Everybody will be laughing. By the time they leave there, they find that they are not the only ones dealing with it, that we've been there, that we are still there. Some things you go through in life, it's God preparing you. It's 
God preparing you for your assignment. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Hear this. Your finishing is tied to your foundation. Many people want to see the finished products without investing in the foundation to make sure it's solid. People lose out a life after investing much because they had no foundation. And let me throw in this there. Those of us that have children, give them God. Give them God. One of my sons was telling me today how a footballer, I know I don't watch football, I'm not, I don't have time. I love soccer. But by the time I stand, watch people make money for how many hours do they play now? You know? And I'm not reading my Bible. I'm not studying. I'm not preparing. You know, I said, you know, my day is gone. So the person was telling me how somebody filed a divorce after three years and then went to cash out. And boom, surprise. The final that the, the, the young boy married a wise mother. I don't know what happened, but somebody came to play somebody and got played. It's player, play, player. I'm telling you. And I said, the age, he told me the age. I said, somebody came to make money. Heavy disappointment. I saw a guy, basketball, one time. You know, I was on Instagram, one of the grams. And then I saw this story. African Americans, they're discussing this footballer, basketballer, how he made so much money and they married this woman. And this woman had one baby for him. After that baby, he divorced him and Five for divorce. Now the woman is heavily loaded. She's going after another basketballer. Oh man, the woman is fine. Yeah, she's fine. Well packaged by Yahweh. <laughs> but she's using it to do what? To commit serious damage. Let me tell you. There are things that if you put it in your children, there are mistakes they will make. Oh. Foundation. There are things, if your children have it, there are choices they will make. So, we're going to leave it alone. I still have eight points or ten of them. Have you been blessed today? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Nothing. Except the Lord builds. They that build, they are wasting their time. They are building. So when God's things does not excite you, you are setting yourself up for danger. Yeah. We are not wasting our time. I have said it before. God and God's children were the ones God used. He didn't use the pastor. I love the pastor. May he so rest in peace. But he didn't, he didn't want me to marry my wife. So... I don't think he made that, he made that investment, but brethren in the church, yeah, I'm serious. I don't know if it was the stuff going on, the Yoruba things, I have no idea, and he bought it, but that area, he didn't do me well. He didn't do me well, because I almost lost my wife to all this uh, traditional stuff going on in their, in their brain. Look, where is now in heaven? You'll be asking God for forgiveness every day, because he almost stopped this. I'm telling how will I do this ministry without my wife? That's the kind of woman I need to do this work. I'm telling you. That's why even when she provokes me, after I said, don't piss me off, I calm myself down. <laughs> I'll teach you some of those things because I understand that her role is very vital in me fulfilling my destiny. The reason why I feel Miss Baby is because you don't even know your, your assignment, you don't know your destiny, you don't know your purpose. And the person God brought into your life, they are there for an assignment. You don't have to be a pastor. No! Bow your heads. Thank you, ancient of days. Just talk to him quietly wherever you are. Some of you, you're going through the storm. You're going to be all right. Some of you, you're going through it. Some of you, it looks like it's a mistake, but I'm here to tell you that it's not a mistake. Look around you. 
Look at the good things that have come out of your union together. You may be watching online. Take your eyes, your mind back to the days where everything was working well. This is just a season. The storm will pass. The storm will pass. This season will end. And you will have a glorious testimony. Don't be in a rush to conclude. Because God has not concluded yet. When you took that vow, you said to death, do you part? When you took that vow, whatever was in your mind, picture your wedding day. Whether it was church or traditional. Look at the joy that was in you. It's not wasted time. It's not wasted effort. Look at the beautiful children, beautiful daughters, beautiful sons God has given to you. And focus on that this, this, evening, this morning. Look at that. And then ask yourself an honest question. Is God in it? Have I left God? Did I walk away? Have I been building on my, on my own? Where is God in this marriage? Where is God in this relationship? Get God involved. And he has what it takes to take care of you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We come before you as babies, as children. None of us is dead marriage. None of us went into it to fail. Lord, somewhere along the line, whatever has happened, we ask that there will be restoration. We ask for restoration. We ask for restoration. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Still in that attitude, you're here, you're not saved, you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. The best thing any man can do for himself is to settle his eternal life. And the best thing any safe person can do for themselves is to embrace the process of transformation. But without salvation, transformation is in a, it's not possible. So I want to ask, you are here. You are not sure you are born again. Your spirit man is not witnessing to you that you are a child of God. That if anything happens to you today, you will end in heaven and not in hell. You are in this place. This is your opportunity. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are. I will pray with you. When you're watching online, you want to make that decision. If you're lifting that hand, lift it very high. I want to be able to see the hand. If you're lifting your hand, you want to rededicate your life to God or you want to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to lead you to Christ. I see a hand there. Lift that hand up high. Lift it high and shame the devil. Put your hands together. Any other person joining him this morning? I pray to God that God, someone today will make this decision. May I ask that you rise to your feet, sir. Rise to your feet. God bless you. Place your right hand on your chest and repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I come before you today as a sinner. I need you, Lord. Come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. From this day forward, I will serve you. I will follow you. You will be my God and I will be your son. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe you died for me. Thank you. Thank you. Say thank you for giving me salvation today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. This is the best decision you have made in your life. And if you made it sincerely, I promise you, your life will never remain the same again. May the same grace that brought you, may that same grace preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. This gentleman here will get your information. I want to follow through with you. Can we one more time celebrate God? Oh, celebrate Him. Heaven is rejoicing this morning. Heaven is rejoicing this morning. God bless you. Quickly, it's time for us to give to God. We are commanded to honor the Lord. Glorify God with all your wealth. Honor him with your very best.